There are three goals that I want to achieve if I sit down with a potential PhD supervisor, postdoc supervisor, or collaborator. The first one is general rapport. Like, can I get on with this person? Is this person easy to talk to? Does this person show interest in what I'm saying? Are they able to communicate effectively? Are they distracted? Is there always kind of like phones going off? Are they actually present or are they waiting to kind of rush me out the door? That's the first thing I'm looking for. The, the second thing is their research area and importantly, areas of recent success. Now, the thing about research is that it can just be messy, horrible, but there are normally a couple of things that bubble up to the surface during the process of research that the supervisor or the collaborator is particularly interested in. Now, the reason I look for the areas of recent success, and it normally tells me where interest lies in the general public, but also what is working now and something that I can build on. Um, and recent successes also mean that they're kind of a little bit more excited about this certain area. And so capturing that early, doubling down on what works is really important. And the third thing, if you're meeting up with a PhD supervisor or a collaborator or just a research kind of fellow, I talk about funding opportunities, like where is the money coming from to do this research? Not only in terms of keeping you alive as a PhD student and giving you a scholarship, but also money for the project. Like if there's special equipment that needs to be bought, if there's a laptop, if there's a certain access to certain software that you need, you need to make sure that it's completely funded for the lifetime of your um, PhD scholarship. So those are the three things. Do you get on? Is their research uh, starting to kind of um, take off in a certain area and funding opportunities? And here are the six questions that I asked to kind of get an idea about those three areas. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, and more exclusive content only available on that newsletter. And I'm writing a new ebook soon, and you'll get a cheeky little discount from my dirty little fingers straight into your inbox. Supervisors love talking about themselves and they love talking about their research. So I like to get researchers talking about their research as soon as possible. I ask them to tell me about any recent advancements, any particular thing that's exciting to them at the moment. Research PhD research supervisors generally have like a range of subjects that they're working on at any one time and a few of them will bubble up to the surface and they'll absolutely love it. If you cannot get your PhD or your perspective PhD PhD supervisor to talk passionately, interestingly about their PhD research topics they have on offer, then probably don't do them. Like, this is the thing, you have to listen to this supervisor harp on for years about their research and they often quite like to boast about all of their achievements. So you have to make sure that at very least the underlying topic that they are interested in is interesting to you and that they're still interested in it. I know some older professors who are still doing research in areas that just aren't very interesting. I did a uh, postdoc on highly reflective mirrors. And when this person was telling me about the highly reflective mirror science, I got very, very bored and I still did the postdoc. And it wasn't because the person, like the researcher wasn't very nice, it was just a sign to me that maybe this isn't something I wanna do for like five or 10 years. It just didn't really interest me, but unfortunately that's where the money was and that's where I went. So just listen to them talk about their research and start to get a feel about the excitement levels around and also your excitement levels. Is this actually interesting or is my mind drifting off and I am thinking about other things I'd rather be doing like, uh, I don't know, running around in a field drinking tea. Another great question is to ask what their PhD graduates are currently doing. This will give you an idea of what you can expect from your career trajectory after you leave. Now, it's something that a lot of people sort of don't ask, don't think about, because they're just sort of like worried about the now. They don't worry about the future. I certainly didn't worry about the future. I was just like, great, I'm in Australia doing a PhD. I don't know what to do next. But if I had asked, I would have actually found out that a majority of these people that my uh, supervisor, my primary supervisor kicked out at the other end of their PhD probably 
were just like floating around on random bits of money without any current direction. A few of them ended up going into mining technologies, which is what I did because of the colloid and surface science interaction with emulsion explosives. Um, and so that gives you an idea of, you know, what to expect at the end of it, because it is a finite amount of time. And it all sometimes when you're in the middle of it, it feels like it's going to go on forever. But ultimately, it's a finite amount of time. And at the end of it, you're going to have to work out what you do. So ask. Your current um, graduates that have been kicked out of the other side of the PhD um, uh, system, what are they doing? What are they? Are they in other universities? Can you point me to any successes? That is a great way to kind of set expectations for where you can take your career. Talking about expectations, another great question is what the supervisor expects from their PhD students. It is one of the questions I always asked whether or not I was going into a postdoc or collaboration, whatever it is. Expectations are the one thing that can make someone very mad at you because sometimes we don't express the expectations explicitly and all of a sudden you've broken an unwritten rule or you've done something wrong and all of a sudden they don't like you. So expectations up front are very important and these aren't like, you know, a dictator expectations, these are negotiable. Like, for example, in one of my postdocs, one of my supervisors said to me, you are going to produce five papers a year. And ha 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 ha, that was laughable. But I went, okay, no problem. I, I produced like, I think maybe four or five papers by the end of my postdoc, which was about three years. But overall, that's not the speed at which, you know, that sort of research was um, done. So overall, expectations. Where do they expect you to be at certain times? Is there group meetings that you have to turn up to? Um, are they expecting a certain amount of publications? Are you, do you have to go to conferences? Essentially lay out all of the expectations and uh, even if you don't like some of them, at least you know. Like if you're choosing a PhD supervisor and they want to work you to the bone, like you know, some of them have pretty high expectations of their students and I always think it's nice to have a stretch goal, but what are the actual sort of like stretch goals and what are the actual expectations? Where have you got to be at certain times? They expect you to be in the lab on the weekends, they expect you to not have a life outside of the lab. Sometimes they'll kind of gloss over some of the really important stuff and that's where you need to kind of get an idea of the lab culture. And I think by asking this question, you get an idea of the culture of the lab, if they're worked hard. You know, also, do you meet up sometimes just for fun? Do you have like end of year activities? How do you celebrate birthdays? All of these things are really important questions because ultimately you'll be sort of dedicating a portion of your life to research under this person. So yeah, what are their expectations from you? And getting those out clear as day is so important. Ask the tricky questions. How often do you have group meetings? How easy is it to sort of like knock on your door and ask you questions? Do you expect me to go to conferences? These are important culture questions that will allow you to see the sort of level of commitment you are required to have to the group and the supervisor. Group meetings typically for me happened between once every two weeks to once every month. And sometimes different groups come together and have big group meetings. So you are sort of getting an idea of how into connected the kind of culture of the lab is and importantly by setting up these group meetings by setting up the you know one-on-one -on -one interactions by being able just to sort of walk into their lab and ask questions that was one thing that you know a simple five minute conversation can cause uh, all of the worry to dissipate because you've got that simple answer and you can move on so how available is this person to the people in the group and what kind of collaborations do they allow you to set up between groups are there any sort or groups that come together? How are you uh, encouraging that kind of uh, interaction? Because a PhD can be incredibly lonely. And so by sort of doing your work, but also often going out of your bubble and speaking to other people, it helps get those sort of creative ideas firing. So yes, important questions to ask. Funding opportunities. Ask explicitly what funding opportunities are available to new PhD students in the university department or in this project. A lot of um, projects when they start, they say, okay, you're gonna kick out a certain number of PhD students at the end of it. And if you're lucky, you can get one of those PhD scholarships that are part of a, a wider, bigger project. Um, a lot of funding is contingent on kicking out not only postdocs, but also PhD students, master's students, and there can be a bit of funding 
wrapped up in large projects. Um, one thing I used to do actually is go on to have a look at successful projects on the funding body. So the ARC, the Australian Research Council, when there was a new funding round, I'd go on and see, okay, well, who's got money? Because ultimately that is where you need to sort of be directing your attention. If someone in your field has got money, they may have extra money for PhD scholarships, for um, postdocs, for research in general, and that's where you want to be. Science, unfortunately, isn't as well funded uh, these days as it used to be by governments. And uh, you do have to ask what kind of funding. A lot of um, researchers are filling the gap of government funding with industry funding. So are there any industry funded placements in the university that you could kind of link up with? All of this is very important. Money, money, money. Without money, your time in academia is going to be just much more challenging and upsetting than it needs to be. Always ask for funding opportunities, whether that's external, government funded, university funded, department funded, it doesn't matter where the money comes from. As long as your PhD scholarship lasts for the length of your PhD, you'll be in a much better position. Ask about funding, definitely. The last thing I ask about is, can I talk to your current PhD students or researchers. This will either go one of two ways. They're gonna go, of course, I'll put you in contact with such and such and so and so. And that is normally a good sign. If they are willing to sort of open up the group to you and they're not worried what the other people are gonna say about them to you, then I think that's perfect. Another thing to do is kind of ask similar questions to these uh, people that you meet, whether it's in person, via email, via WhatsApp, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. A simple phone call with these people can really help you understand if what you're seeing from above filters down naturally and nicely. Like, is the culture of the lab as nice as they say it is? Are they respectful, but also kind of like uh, helped with, uh, with their research? by this research supervisor. All of that is very, very important. So reach out to these um, current students and ask them similar questions and see if you get similar answers. See if they've got any issues with the supervisor. Ask them, okay, I'm thinking about starting a PhD scholarship, you know, under this supervisor. What do you think? You know, what are some top tips for coming into this lab? All of those are very important questions. The second way the can I meet your current students question can go is they can be very cagey. They can be very cagey because they know that what they've just told you is a load of bull. They're not interested in their students. They just are playing the academic game. If they're not sort of like completely open and allowing you to access their group, um, I would see that as a major red flag. And, uh, you know, I, could, I would kind of, you know, do a bit of stalking and find out who they are. But ultimately, if they allow you to speak to their current students openly, freely, and they encourage that interaction, then that's a great sign. So there we have it. There are the questions I would ask a potential PhD supervisor. Let me know in the comments what you would add. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my new project where I have my ebook, the ultimate academic writing toolkit, as well as my new ebook when it comes out and my insider forum. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.